Hello friends, welcome back to our channel. In previous session, we have started the Java programming and in, this, in that session, we have seen the basic terminologies of Java and how to set the class path. And also we have seen so the execution of a Java program. Now in this session, let's have a look on one more important concept that is Java buzzwords. So what are these Java buzzwords? This is a, a, a frequently asked questions in the interview. So these Java buzzwords are nothing but the features of Java. The features of Java, we call them as Java buzzwords. So let us do one by one. First one. Platform independent. So as we have seen in the previous session, so JDK consists of a compiler and the JRE. So if whenever a Java program is compiled, dot class file will be generated. That is called a bytecode, and that bytecode will be allocated to the JVM. So the JVM will execute this bytecode. And here the JVM that is Java Virtual Machine is a operating system dependent. So every operating system will be having their own JVM. So but the output coming from all the operating systems will be same. So for example, if we write a Java code and if we compile it, we will get the class file, dot class file. And if that dot class file has been executed in a Windows operating system, we will get some output. And if the same dot class file is executed in Linux operating system, the same output will be produced. Even the, if, the say, if the dot class file is executed in the Mac operating system, the same output will be produced. So whatever the operating system we are using, the output will be same. So that's, that why, that's why we call it as a platform independent. So it can run on any environment so it can run on any environment second java follows the object oriented concepts this is also very important object oriented concepts so whereas in the previously we have seen the c programming where the c programming is the procedure oriented programming where the program is completely divided into parts called as functions so here in java programming the program is divided into several parts that we call it as a classes and objects so our Java programming follows these object oriented concepts. So what are these object oriented concepts we will see in the next session. Briefly I will tell the object oriented concepts, main object oriented concepts are abstraction, encapsulation, inheritance, And a polymorphism. So major object-oriented concepts are these four: abstraction, encapsulation, inheritance, and polymorphism. So Java programming will follow all these concepts. So we will see one by one in the next sessions. Right? Third one. Java programming is very simple to implement. Why it is simple means comparatively in the C program we will have some complex structures like pointers, dynamic memory allocation and operator overloading. So all those concepts will be discarded or removed in this Java programming. So here no concept of 
pointers explicit memory allocation as well as structures or operator overloading etc so we we will not touch all these concepts in java programming that means the point this concept or explicit memory allocation or operator overloading etc all these concepts will be not there not available in java programming so java programming is very simple to implement next it is very secure to implement the applications the internet applications right so here secure for internet applications so we can achieve this security so just one example for getting this security means it will raise out of boundary exception in arrays if if the programmer accessing the index value which is out of range so in c language that is a limitation right so if you declare one array with size 10 so the user can able to access the 11th index or 12th index also but here it is not possible it will raise an exception that is out of boundary array out of bounds exception so that's why there will be some ex exceptions and also it is strong typed language it's also a strong typed language so based upon all these points we can say that java program is secure next one robust so here the robust means early identification and checking of errors right so compile at the time of compilation itself we are getting some errors and we are rectifying all those errors right so early checking of errors early checking of errors and this can be achieved with the help of garbage collector exception hand right so by using this garbage collector and exception handling we can identify the errors so whenever the error is uh, Occur, then automatically, if you write this exception handling, if you implement this exception handling, the exception will be raised. Next, it's a portable. That means we can write the Java programming in one environment, and we can implement the Java programming, the same program, in another environment. So. java program written on one environment can be executed or implemented in another environment so as it is a platform independent we can write the java programming in one environment and we can execute the same java programming in another environment so that's why we call it as a portable so java programming is also a portable next multi threading so java programming supports this multi threading in concept so what is meant by multi threading 
so concurrent execution of different parts of a same program at a time so for example if you consider one program so let it be it is divided into different parts and each part is executed at the same time it's called multi threading so concurrent execution execution of several parts of same program at the same time so this will improve cpu utilization this will improve the cpu utilization so java program is having this multi threading concept next distributed applications distributed applications so coming to this distributed applications so java programming will create these type of applications so what is meant by this distributed applications so these distributed applications are the software which can run on multiple systems which are connected in the internet at the same time so distributed environment so we can create we can create a java program for these distributed applications so it is a software that runs on multiple computers connected to a network at the same time right these are the softwares that runs on multiple computers connected to a network at the same time that we call as distributed applications a java program is able to create these distributed applications so for creation of these distributed applications java requires two concepts that is rmi and ejb rmi means remote method invocation remote method invocation ejb means enterprise java bins so with the help of these two concepts java can implement these distributed applications in the next one architectural neutral it's also very important feature that java supports that is architectural neutral so for example if you consider the c language so there uh, the the size of a data type will depends upon the architecture of a compiler so if you take an integer variable if it is a 16 bit compiler it occupies two bytes of memory and if it is a 32 bit compiler it occupies four bit of memory four bytes two bytes of memory and four bytes of memory so that means the allocation memory allocation will depends upon the architecture whereas in this java whatever the architecture we are using it the memory allocation will not vary right so here irrespective of architecture the memory allocated to the variables will not vary right 
that is called architectural neutral so whatever the architecture we are using the memory allocated for the variables is same so hope you understood this one these are the important features of java java so which we call them as java buzzwords so let us see all at a glance Java features in the first one is platform independent. applications object oriented simple secure Architectural neutral, robust, and portable. So, all these are the Java features or Java buzzwords. So hope you understood this concept. It's a very, very important concepts. So if you are having any doubts, so you can post your doubts in the comment section so that I will definitely try to solve your doubts. And if you really understood my sessions, like my sessions, share my sessions with your friends and don't forget to subscribe to our channel. So thanks for watching. Thank you very much.